Welcome to WP Theme Tutorial, episode 41. Today we're going to look at logging all the emails that come out of WordPress or through the WP Mail function. If you're not familiar with the WP Mail function, I've already written two posts on it. One about making sure things don't fail silently in your WordPress code. In that one, basically, I talked about if you have an exception, right? if you expect condition A but get condition B, email someone. This is actually taking it a step further. In today's tutorial, we're going to say log all emails that come out of WordPress. I know I've done it, pretty much all developers have done this at some point, where they uh, are working on the development site and they accidentally email all the users something that they don't that they shouldn't have. So if you're working on a membership site, say you email all 5,000 people a renewal or that their account's expired. I have done that and I know others that have done that. Today, we're gonna make sure that that does not happen. We're gonna use a few things to do that. One of the first things you're going to use is the WP Logging class by Pippin's Plugins by Pippin Williams. This is an excellent logging class, um, and what it does basically, or not basically, what it does for you is build out um, a custom post type for logs, and then a format to put them in. You can see here from the GitHub page that it comes with two log types to start with: error and event. So error is obviously something we don't expect, and an event is what we'll use today with emails. We're just going to log the events, and they're filterable. So let's jump into our code. What I've got is just a standard WordPress install, um, and I've already started out the plugin. So you can see that I've got the WPTT email log and then WPTT email log.php, which is my main plugin file, and the WP logging class is already downloaded as well and put into that. And that's where we're starting from. You can see in my WPTT email log, I've also got the basic plugin header explaining what it does and then the disclaimer. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to add the WP logging class so that it actually is around for us to use. And that's all we have to do is include WP logging. Right, so we should activate our plugin as well. So let's activate it. Now, WPTT logging or WP logging does not show us anything in the WordPress admin by default. And you can see I've just got down my side here the standard posts, media, pages, all the standard stuff. It doesn't provide a UI. The reason it doesn't provide a UI is that there's so many different scenarios you could be logging. So there's just not a generic one. Uh, it's hard to come up with anything that would work for every scenario. So what we're gonna do, because that is also filterable for us, is we're gonna come in and we are gonna change that. So all we're gonna do to start with is do the basic register post type and we're just gonna make it true so that we see our logs. When we refresh, we have a fatal error, awesome. And that's my fatal error. So there you go. Now you can see we have our log post type and there's nothing in it. And that's all well and good to have that, but this also means that when we install this plugin on any site, so even if it's running on our live site, that because we want to log things still, our user is going to see it. Our client is going to see the logs and we don't really want that. So we need to do a few more things here. One of the first things we need to do is add a constant to our WP config file. And you can see that I already have it set. So I've set a constant with define development true. So what this is going to do is add just a constant to WordPress so that if my constant is true, we are in a development environment. So now I need to change my filter call so that we're only going to show our logs if development is true. And we can do that by that. You can see here I'm checking if development is defined and development. So and if it's true, we're going to add our filter for WP logging post type args. And you'll see since it is true, we have it if I go back to and comment it out so that it's not there. We can still see it. So you can still type in URLs if it's not public, but you can see it's not in my menu anymore. 
And if I were to make it false, we're going to get the same thing. We can get to it if we know the URL, but we can't actually see it from the menu. So there we go, we have our logs. Now, we can see our logs, which is great, but we're not actually logging anything yet. And what we want to do is we want to log WP Mail. So like I said, if you're not familiar with WP Mail, jump to the links I provided in the post and you can go get all the content that I've written on WP Mail as well as a link to the codex. So WP Mail is a what's called a pluggable function. What that means is we can basically overwrite it by including our own copy of WP Mail. So I'll do that right here. And you can see I'm doing a few things here. The first thing I'm doing is I'm checking if WP Mail exists. When you activate a plugin, or our plugin here, WP Mail will already exist inside WordPress. So you'll get a fatal error. You need to wrap it if in the if exists so that your plugin will activate. And then I'm checking for if our development environment is defined and it's true. We'll use our WP Mail function. And WP Mail takes, what is it? One, two, three, four, five parameters, two subject message headers and attachments. This is just the stock ones. Um, that we'd get. Now WP logging provides two ways for us to log. We go back to our the GitHub page. It provides the add. So you do WP logging add and you get out of that you're allowed to do title, message, parent, and type. So let's look let's see what that would look like. If I was going to log using the add, that's what I'd get. So I'd define my title, log WordPress email to, and I'd add the title, the message, which is our message, and it's an event. It doesn't have an ID or parent, so we're not going to worry about that. Now that's great, that's going to generate a log for us, but what that's not going to do is give us a whole bunch of other information that we can use. What I like to use, what I almost always use, is the insert log. An insert log gives us two arrays of data. You can see here it gives us all the same ones we just used, our post title, post content, which would be message, post parent. So we'd use post parent to say if we we're going to do a transaction ID, you can see the explanation there. If we're going to do a transaction ID and that's going to have a, a WordPress post ID, then we would match the two together so that we know what went with that. What the type of log is, the real power comes in our second array though, the log meta array. Here we can put anything we want in and it's just going to save us metadata in our post. So in this case, Pippin showing customer IP and user ID, which is get current user ID. That's going to let us know information about where our customer came from in this case, their IP and their user ID. For WP Mail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bunch of extra information. Let's highlight this and replace, replace my logging here. So what am I catching? Now I'm catching post title the same way, catching most message the same way. Now you can see I have post parent as post ID, and I've also declared a global of post. I just want to know what page was hap was around when this happened. It's not necessarily, uh, or WP Mail is not necessarily tied to a page, but I want to know if there is one, what it was. And I define my log type. But here's where we get to our power. You can see I've saved our two, our subject, our message, our headers, our attachments, our current user with WP get current user, which will give me the whole user object and our post object, which will give me the whole post object. This is giving me basically all the information I could possibly want. When you're debugging, there is no such thing as too much information. So this is excellent. Now let's run a quick test on our logs to make sure we are generating them. The easiest way to do this is we're just going to add action WP uh, sorry, that's that admin init. I'm going to call our test function. And inside our test function, all it's going to do is call WP mail. And two, we'll do admin at
and then we need so that's our two subject and our message that's all we're required to have so now all we have to do is because we called it on admin init is to refresh our page and you can see there we're having an issue trying to get property of non-object on line 56 so that means right here post is not actually an object so we're not going to get it in this case we probably would or we would need to do more checking to make sure we are actually getting a post ID so we would do something like if not is object post since there's no post ID then we'll count post ID equals null so that should take care of our extra warning there we go you can see we have two logs test log message it's giving me everything you can see we have event as a tag now what we don't have is our extra metadata like I said there's no special UI for WP logging so we'd actually have to kind of look at the database to see our logging data or write a UI just to show all our metadata under here that's two options uh, I typically just look through the database real quick usually I can tell just from where things are happening what is going wrong or what my most likely thing is so you know you spend an extra minute looking for something in the database or a couple minutes testing it it's kind of a toss-up the other drawback to this currently is that it doesn't prune our logs at all it's unlikely that logs from a month ago or even maybe two weeks ago are going to be of much use to us today debugging a problem so if you're going to deploy this on a live site especially you want to make sure that you set up a WordPress cron job to prune your logs after a certain time or even to export them and archive them so that you can come back to them if you need them but like I said it's very unlikely that you're going to need to debug anything from say two weeks ago or three weeks ago probably the last two weeks of logs is plenty for you so that's how we do email logging with WP mail as a pluggable function and WP logging thanks for watching